This week on The Splash, we join the 9th Annual Health and Wellness Fair. Then we take a look at voting. And later, we head out for Family Fun Day. The Splash is a production of Civic Center TV. We're a news magazine that covers everything from local news to feature stories, all so that we can bring you the latest from the greater West Bloomfield area. And now, let's dive into The Splash. Welcome to The Splash. I'm your host, Sheena Monin, and as always, thank you for joining us. Being healthy is much more than just exercise. At the annual Health and Wellness Fair, reporter Jason Pauley was on hand to catch the very latest information from local experts toward achieving overall wellness. The West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce has put on its annual Health and Wellness Fair, showing West Bloomfield and its community's commitment to healthy living. Residents from the greater West Bloomfield area gathered at Town Hall for the annual Health and Wellness Fair. This is the ninth annual Health and Wellness event sponsored through the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce and it's a community-wide open to the public event to offer different information about body, mind, and soul that will help the community. Many businesses from the West Bloomfield and Oakland County area set up booths giving out information and services. We have 40 vendors and the idea is we're promoting health and wellness and beauty and we have some very interesting vendors. Today we are offering free blood pressure screenings. We have a physician assistant, Kim, and she's doing free blood pressure screenings. We're also giving out information about specialists. We have um, eye testing, and then we have some fun stuff like even brownies and kale salads. So we have our signature salad today, which is our kale salad. So it's kale and quinoa with a vinaigrette dressing. It's roasted garlic vinaigrette dressing that we have. The event gathered a sizable turnout, showing just how committed West Bloomfield and its residents are to a healthy lifestyle. West Bloomfield has always been environmentally conscious and sensitive based on the wetlands and woodlands, and that leads to many of our residents, they're joggers, they're hikers, they're bicyclists, they believe in health. We at the township want our employees to maintain healthy lifestyles because not only is it better for them, but it's good for productivity and morale. We are very committed to their well-being. So it's really great when we can offer all these different businesses from home health care workers to senior facilities to hospitals that offer different information about how they can take care of themselves and where they should go to if they have a health problem. It's events like the Health and Wellness Fair that show that the residents of West Bloomfield are committed to a healthy lifestyle. Reporting for The Splash, I'm Jason Polly. To find out more, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash health and wellness. Being part of a community comes with the privilege of voting in local elections. But what happens if you are out of town during that time? Reporter Tyler Keeft has those details. Election season is in full swing, but for some of you that won't be in West Bloomfield Township or just can't make it to the polls on Election Day, there's a special method that you may want to consider utilizing so that your voice is heard. While many people will flock to the polls this summer to determine our next crop of local and state leaders, for some of us, the hustle and bustle of summer and fall in Michigan may keep us from the polls altogether. For many, an absentee ballot may be a necessary asset to utilize to make sure that they have their say in the election process. An absentee ballot is a form of voting for a, a voter who cannot get to the polls for a variety of reasons on election day. They're able to have their voice heard and have their vote count by requesting an absentee ballot and voting. While voting absentee is a viable alternative for those who cannot make the polls, it is only acceptable under a very specific set of circumstances. It's available to any resident who is unable, again, to get to the polls for a variety of reasons. Residents who are over 60 are automatically entitled to vote by absentee ballot if they they wish, and anybody who will not be in the jurisdiction that day and able to vote at the polls is able to vote absentee. They just have to fill out the application and bring it to the clerk's office or contact, send it to the clerk's office and we will send them an absentee ballot. Voting absentee does have its own set of protocols and deadlines. But to accommodate residents' busy schedules, the West Bloomfield Township Office has provided extra weekend time to the community to make sure that all absentee voters are accounted for. It's also important to know that we are open on the Saturday preceding all elections for absentee voting. We are op here from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. And we will hand out absentee ballots where you can either take them home with you and I would recommend returning them either to the clerk's office on Monday 
or dropping them in the drop box conveniently located on the east side of the building. You can drop your absentee ballot in there at any time. We check that box twice a day, but it's a great spot to conveniently drop off your ballot. If you, um, if you vote on Monday absentee, you will have to fill out your ballot here at Town Hall. West Bloomfield has committed to making sure that all of its voters, whether they can make the polls or not, are able to submit their votes in all elections and fulfill one of the great civic duties provided to our nation's citizens. Everybody should want and have their voice heard, and the only way to do that is by getting out there and voting. If you can't get to the polls, you still have an equal opportunity to be heard through an absentee ballot. So it's important that every resident of West Bloomfield Township that's a United States citizen gets out there and exercises their right and privilege to vote. For more information on absentee voting or the elections in general, visit the Secretary of State's website or contact the very friendly staff at the West Bloomfield Clerk's Office. From West Bloomfield Town Hall, I'm Tyler Keeft, reporting for The Splash. For more information, feel free to stop by our website at civiccentertv.com slash absentee voting. Still to come, we head over to Sylvan Lake to enjoy Family Fun Day. And then we take a look at a new episode of Sidewalk Talk. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. to the Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to the Splash. I'm your host, Sheena Monin. Community events such as Family Fun Day are the perfect way to come together, get outside, and mingle with local friends and even local law enforcement in a positive way. I stopped by one of our local events to see the fun and activities for myself. Summertime is the perfect time to get out with a family and invite friends along to celebrate the warmer weather and, in the case of Sylvan Lake, also get to know our local law enforcement a bit better too. This is the Sylvan Lake Family Fun event, which is all about families and children and making sure that everybody in the community is having fun. And um, We're a big community in this, this town, so we just want to make sure that we're all together doing some exciting things today. People in the community donate money. We put on a free event for everybody in the city, um, from the young to the old. It's, we have bounce houses, water slides, magic show. It's just a fun outdoor picnic for everybody in the city and the surrounding area. The community seemed to really enjoy getting to see and interact with local law enforcement, an important step toward building relationships. For us, it's us giving back to the community and bringing everybody together. So. The, the officers are out of uniform, we get our faces painted, we wear goofy hats. It's, it's to show everybody that we're human, that it's not all cops and robbers, it's we're human too, it's all to have fun. This successful event is nothing new to Sylvan Lake and Mike Mondo has been a key part in building it for over a decade. This event's been going on for 12 years. Um, the event started back in 2006. Uh, when I first got hired here, uh, another department that I used to work for did events for the public and we, I kind of brought it with me here. We will look forward to many more years of this fun summer event. For more information on Family Fun Day, visit civiccentertv.com slash familyfunday2018. Now it's time for another episode of Sidewalk Talk, where Samana Sheik spoke to Greater West Bloomfield residents to find out their thoughts on a new topic. My favorite summer drink is a mango milkshake. What about you? What's yours?
I don't know. It's probably a toss-up between unsweetened iced tea and probably diet soda. I know that's probably sort of bland sounding, but iced tea in the summertime, I think it goes hand in hand because I do not drink iced tea at any other time of the year, but maybe summer. Mojitos. Definitely mojitos. Those are awesome. Arnold Palmer. Oh, good choice. <laughs> Thank you. Strawberry daiquiris. Yummy. I agree with that. <laughs> yeah, they're my favorite. Water. Ice water. Just, it's, if because if I have to go, it's either that or coffee. I drink coffee year-round. It would be a beer. It would be a cold beer, like a hoppy cold beer. Is there a specific beer that you like, the company? Um, well, the, sub, the one I was actually drinking tonight, the M43, is a beer I like. It's like hoppy, but it's fruity at the same time. But So what's your favorite summer beverage to drink? Well, I'd have to say beer. I, uh, I'm at the Lodge Bar and Grill right now and uh, enjoying what they have to serve, but uh, definitely beer. I really like iced tea. <laughs> um, with sweetened iced tea or a specific kind? I'm um, really weird. I like unsweetened iced tea. Like no sugar, no flavors or anything. Uh, water uh, is absolutely great all the time, every time. I, I also like uh, good scotch on the rocks. I love, and it's new, I love vodka with coconut water. It's delicious, refreshing, and very um, summery. Nice. Is that going to be your 4th of July drink? It will. <laughs> and probably before and after the 4th of July. <laughs> See you again next week on another episode of Sidewalk Talk. If you'd like to see some of our other fun and interesting questions on the show, you can do so anytime and anywhere by visiting our website at civiccentertv.com slash sidewalk talk. And now it's time for our Civic Center event update, where we provide you with all the latest that's happening around Greater West Bloomfield. And if you'd like to stay up to date on all of the following current events yourself, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash events. Let's get started. <laughs> Treat your muscles to a morning of gentle therapeutic yoga at Spirit of Grace Church. Belightful gentle yoga is appropriate for adults in all levels of physical activity. Experience is not necessary. Belightful gentle yoga is taking place every Wednesday from 11 a.m. until noon. Drop-in price is $7 per class or a monthly rate of $25 is available as well. It is encouraged that you bring your own yoga mat and be prepared to meet new friends and walk away with a better sense of your own well-being. For more information, visit spiritofgrace.church. The Chaldean Cultural Center Museum is open to the public on Fridays from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. Come learn about this fascinating culture, complete with hands-on activities, multimedia presentations, and a showcasing of special artifacts from time periods gone by. Tours are available by appointment and cost $5 for a self-guided tour and $10 for a guided tour. To schedule your tour or find out more details, be sure to visit ChaldeanCulturalCenter.org. If your child enjoys playing with Legos, then you won't want to miss the Lego Maker Monday happening on Monday starting on July 9th and running through August 27th at the West Bloomfield Township Public Library. Taking place from 1 p.m. until 3 p.m., this creative event will allow your child aged 5 to 12 years old to play with the library's Legos and use your imagination to build something memorable. There is no need to bring any Legos with you, but you do need to register. You can register for this free event by visiting WB lib.org. Food Truck Tuesdays is sure to please the entire family. Whether you live or work near the West Bloomfield Township Civic Center Plaza, you will enjoy tasting the delicious offerings of various food trucks on site July 10th from 11.30 a.m. until 1.30 p.m. Chairs and tables will be provided. Come meet local township officials and employees in a casual, friendly environment. Bring your friends and enjoy a break from the office for this recurring event. Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital is offering the next installment of their free healing arts gallery talk and guided art walk on July 10th from noon until 1.45 p.m. This series is open to the public and people of all backgrounds are welcome to come learn about art and its impact on the human mind and emotions. Starting at noon and going until 1 p.m. in the Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital demonstration kitchen is the gallery talk. The focus this time will be on the meaning behind images of flowers, plants, and gardens. Immediately after, 
from 1 p.m. until 1.45 p.m. is the Guided Art Walk, where participants can see art up close. For more information, you can contact Kelsey Bray at 248-325-3890. Marshbank Music 2.0 is taking place throughout the summer with an upcoming concert on July 11th from 5 p.m. until 8.30 p.m. at Marshbank Park. Bring your friends to this free event that features music from Valerie Baltimore and the Foundation of Funk, followed by Groove Council. Enjoy food from food trucks such as Grill Witch Tot Shop, Detroit Taco Factory, and Kona Ice. There will be a beer and wine tent on site as well. Bring a lawn chair or blanket or enjoy the music from inside the beer and wine tent. For more information, you can visit wbparks.org slash marshbankmusic. If you're a fan of jazz music, then the Jazz on the Patio event might interest you. This recurring event has its next installment on July 13th at Henry's Cafe in the Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. Come enjoy a specially prepared lunch and listen to the professional smooth sounds of various jazz bands. Playing on July 13th is the Motor City Quartet, whose music combines classic jazz with blues. For more information on this free event, you can contact Kelsey Bray at 248-325-0825. Coming up on July 14th, stop by Marshbank Park from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. for Summer on the Bank, a new event that allows the entire family to participate in water and land activities. This free event features activities such as slip and slide and a water slide, a rock wall, paddle sports, and fishing, as well as live music and food trucks. Some activities are free, while others do have a small fee in order to participate. Be sure to bring a towel, cash, and swim attire. For more information, you can visit wbparks.org slash SOTB. And that's all for now. However, if you're looking to find even more events going on in your neighborhood, then be sure to follow us at civiccentertv.com slash events and look up our events calendar. Or watch us here for more information on everything going on in the greater West Bloomfield area. As we head into the break, stay tuned because afterwards I'll be talking with Pat Glasgow, volunteer coordinator at the Meow Town Lounge. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. Civic Center TV is your home for everything greater West Bloomfield. Here you can tune into community programming such as our weekly news magazine show, The Splash, as well as coverage of local events and meetings in Kego Harbor, Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, and West Bloomfield. You can also watch all of your local programming online anytime at civiccentertv.com. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. Civic Center TV has gone social. Now it's easier than ever to watch, save, like, and share our videos online. See what's happening in your neighborhood, on the streets, and on the web at civiccentertv.com. Be a part of the conversation and get involved. We would love to hear from you. For links to our social media pages, visit us at our website or find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Civic Center TV, television that's close to home. And now, back to the splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm Sheena Monin, and here with me on the show this week is Pat Glasgow, volunteer coordinator at the Meow Town Lounge. Now, the name Meow Town Lounge already has me curious. Thank you for being here Thank to talk you. a little bit about something that's very, very important. What is the lounge all about? How did it get started? Go ahead and tell us. Sure. Thanks again for having us, though. Um, so the Meow Town Lounge got started because the whole idea was to ensure that we had an open environment for our community. Pets. Mm. Um, when you're going to adopt a pet, it's often difficult if they're in a cage. You're, don't, you're not really able to interact with them, to know what their personalities are. So the lounge was started with the idea that it's an open environment. You can come in. It's like a living room. Oh, wow. And you sit down and you just interact with the cats. Uh, we have Wi-Fi there in the location. There's tables and chairs. There's games for kids. Mm. Um, and you can get an opportunity to see what the cats are like 
observe their personality and make sure that they're the right cat for your family. That's such an interesting concept. I'm a big fan of that. Yeah. I, from what I would understand, there's probably not a lot of those opportunities when you go to look for an animal right. to actually have that interaction. Now, I'm not too familiar with cats, so you're saying cats have different personalities? They do. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. But the most important thing is knowing that that personality m matches with your family and no, with your personality. Sure. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Wonderful. So in addition to allowing potential adopters or maybe just even a lay person like myself who just wants to sit in that environment. Yeah. In addition to all of that, you do have some ongoing special events, we including do. something geared for seniors, which really caught my attention. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about how important that type of interaction is. So we have a lot of events, but in particular the senior event, the whole idea is that um, a senior can come in into the lounge and they can interact with the cats as well. Mm. Um, there's some studies on, you know, older people and interacting with small children or with the animals and the benefits that that brings. Mm -hmm. So again, it's a comfortable environment and they can sit there and they can play with them. They can have them on their laps. They can stroke them. They can brush them if they'd like. Oh, wow. Nice. So I can see that. And it's located right here in West Bloomfield, it is. right? And the founder of this concept is from West Bloomfield as well, correct? That's right. Michelle DeMaria is her name. So she started this organization, just a little history, that's a 501c3. Mm. It's called Pet Adoption Alternative of Warren. She started it 10 years ago, and wow, she is a resident, right, a resident right here in West Bloomfield. Wow, that's yeah. so exciting. And you guys have expanded. It's continuing to grow. Now, you also offer birthday parties, do. Uh, different board game events, things mm -hmm like that, again, all to allow the animals to be out of their cages and to be able to interact, right? Absolutely. Because they are in cages, sometimes for, you know, two, three months until they get adopted, mm. unless they're in a foster care environment. Yeah. So the whole idea is that we're going to get them out of that cage and let them just roam free and have yeah. some have some fun. That so, is ideal for yeah. sure. And it's kitten season, right? It is. Tell me a little season. bit about that. We have dozens and dozens oh, wow. of kittens. Um, we have about 50 right wow. now. So in total, 100 cats and kittens combined. Okay. So um, in the next one to two weeks, we are going to have quite a few kittens available for mm -hmm. adoption. So people can go on to our site. Okay. They can fill out an application and get the process started. There's also pictures of the cats there, so oh, they can kind of nice. get an opportunity yeah. to see which ones are appealing to them. Mm -hmm. But it's not just about the look of that's the cat, right? right? Yeah. They have to, you want to make sure that it's a cat that you're interested in. Mm -hmm. Some cats prefer a cat that wants to be on their lap and yeah. others want them to be a little bit more aloof so yeah. and that's where the interaction is key I absolutely can see that now I hope more and more organizations move in that direction uh, so it does take volunteers it to keep does. this going you are the volunteer coordinator tell me a little bit if I were to come volunteer mm -hmm. what would my experience be like what would the time commitment be I would love you to be a volunteer yeah. <laughs> So we're really looking for people to socialize the cats. Oh, so okay. if you love animals, mm -hmm. you don't even have to love cats. If mm -hmm. you love animals and you just want to interact with them, reach out to us. Um, mm -hmm. We have many other opportunities besides the socialization aspect of it, but that is where you would be actually coming into Meow Town, getting the animals out of the cage, yeah. making sure that they have fresh food and water, okay. and playing with them. Mm. It's a pretty simple job. Yeah, I love it. Awesome. Great. And uh, the website they can go to for more information is just Meow Town Lounge? Yes, Meow Town Lounge. Okay. And that's where the cats are at, as well as the applications for not only adopting, but volunteering. Great. Well, we appreciate your time. Thank you for being here today. Thank you. We really appreciated it. Absolutely. Once again, everyone, we've been speaking with Pat Glasgow, volunteer coordinator at the Meow Town Lounge. Thank you. Now let's head over to another of our recurring segments called Parenting on the Go, where Samana Sheik spoke to a local expert about an important parenting topic. Hello, and welcome to Parenting on the Go. I am your host, Samana Sheik. Joining me today is Mariana Milo, Community Outreach Manager for Care House of Oakland County. Ms. Milo, thank you so much for joining me today. So can you tell me a little bit about Care House and describe what ACES is? Care House is the Child Advocacy Center for Oakland County. Um, it is a safe place for children. We provide intervention and treatment. My particular program is prevention, so we provide education 
before the community, before trauma, before um, abuse and neglect happens to a child. ACEs is, is an acronym for um, Adverse Childhood Experiences, and we use this model uh, to provide treatment and intervention for our children. That is, we ask the question, what happened to you, rather than what's wrong with you. Of course. So why should a parent or a caregiver care about ACEs? Um, ACEs is a um, research project done by the Center for Disease Control in Kaiser Permanente, headed by Dr. Filetti and Dr. Anda. Uh, it was um, done on 17,500 volunteers who were having um, health screenings. So um, no outcome was expected. Um, it turns out that it was a very significant study because people uh, who had um, one ACE were 67% of the population. But the really concerning population were the people who had, uh, or children who experienced more than four ACEs, uh, had a much more um, traumatic um, lifestyle where they could um, be more likely to abuse alcohol, to abuse drugs, uh, to um, have thoughts about suicidality, to um, uh, have a shortened lifespan by 20 years. Our DNA changes uh, by this number of uh, adverse childhood experiences uh, that we can have in childhood. We just had no idea of the far-reaching effect of adverse childhood experiences. Of course. So what is our call for action? Our call for action is uh, really to strengthen the family, uh, to provide conversations uh, to our children uh, that involve the community, to have resilience as parents, to have resilience as a community, um, to involve grandparents, and the entire family uh, when uh, the child is going through something uh, that we, ha we can count on support for ourselves because we as parents need to be strong in order to deal uh, with what our children are going through. When we have um, an issue, we have to know who our good supports are. So um, understanding um, um, trauma, understanding good parenting, being able to listen to our children on when we talk about the little things in life. Um, we have to build that trust so that when important things happen, uh, we have our children's trust. Of of course, so we can't always prevent ACEs. So where can a family go for help? Well, um, Care House, for example, provides uh, nurturing programs. We provide uh, uh, teen support nights. We have family support evenings on Tuesday nights <laughs> where um, families who have had abuse in their lives talk to parents about what it's been like, what are the steps after uh, the abuse and neglect. So uh, we provide many programs. I provide education to the community, um, breaking the barriers of silence through a program called Stewards of Children, body safety training, um, um, human trafficking training, what are what things to look for. So there's many programs that we can take into a community of professionals, of children, of parents, of caregivers. Of course. So can you pro provide some additional information about contacting for CareHouse? Um, CareHouse.org is our website and um, you are able to get all the information and all the programs. Um, it's a click away. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I like the way that you said that, that pun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining me today. You are very welcome. Thank you so much. I hope this helps parents. It definitely will. And thank you for joining us for this episode of Parenting on the Go. If you would like to look up more helpful parenting tips, you can visit the West Bloomfield Youth Assistance website at wbyouthassistance.org. For more episodes of Parenting on the Go, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash parenting to go. Now it's time for our final segment on the Splash called Person of the Week, where we recognize those within the community who are either inspiring or providing toward others. And this week's recipient is Kathy Robbins, registered nurse and volunteer extraordinaire in Sylvan Lake.
since the day that she moved to Sylvan Lake, Kathy Robbins has volunteered her time, talents, and efforts to help organize, run, and grow several key events in Sylvan Lake. In addition to being an integral part of the Memorial Day ceremony, Kathy has served as the vice president of the Sylvan Lake Garden Club, where she helps organize traditions such as the annual ice cream social and the cleanup efforts of the Sylvan Lake Fourth of July fireworks, as well as manages the hospitality stop during the Sylvan Lake Home and Garden Tour. Kathy believes in building and maintaining a strong, healthy community and does more than her share to keep Sylvan Lake as welcoming, friendly, and full of activities as it currently is. Kathy gives additional time to helping our local seniors to stay connected by driving them on errands and making sure they do not feel left out or alone. She's always looking to find a new way to help others and bring the prettiest little city in Michigan a little closer together. Kathy is a true example of what generosity and commitment to family and community looks like, which is why she is our Person of the Week. If you happen to know someone who is providing a service to their community, then let us know by sending an email to the splash at civiccentertv.com. We want to congratulate those who are making a difference in our area, and we appreciate all of your suggestions. That's going to do it for us this week, but remember, you can watch new episodes of The Splash every Monday at 5.30 p.m. or throughout the week for replays. You can also watch every episode online at civiccentertv.com. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook under Civic Center TV 15, YouTube at Civic Center TV 15, and on Twitter at Civic Center TV for more information. For all our friends in Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, Kego Harbor, and West Bloomfield, I'm Sheena Monin. Thank you for watching The Splash. Oh,